Life flows just like a river. It keeps on moving, no matter what. No matter what you do or who you were, life is not gonna stop. The life that we had, the memories that we built, will be mostly lost after us. But there's few of us who are different. Few of us who live on forever. There's those who challenge the flow, who say we will change life as we know it. Most of them fail at that, but there's just few of them who really change life as we know it. In Dragon Ball, we had those people, the people that said they will make the change. They will stand for what they believe in. The one that we know of is Goku. He was the one that changed everything. He was the one that didn't follow in his race's footsteps. He built his own road and moved forward. And what followed is what changing the flow of life is like. But before him, there was someone who did the exact same thing. Who drew the path that Goku walks on today. And this guy is Yamushi. He is the first Saiyan God. And he's the first Saiyan that challenged his race and stood for what he believed in. He lived thousands of years before Goku was ever born. He was different, but yet the same as Goku. He was the strongest Saiyan that there was. And now we have the one that followed in his footsteps. And our story is about that. Our story is about the Saiyan that Goku was reincarnated as. Our story is about the origin of Yamushi, the strongest Saiyan there was. This is Dragon Ball Super Yamushi. It's a fan made manga, it's not canon. Yamushi in a sense we didn't get a lot from him. We know of his existence and what he did but we never saw his life and we never saw who he was and how Goku represents what Yamushi was back in the day. And this story fills those pieces and with that our story begins. The story begins in planet Sadala. It existed years before the destruction of planet Vegeta. And this was the Saiyan's home planet. In the distance, we see two people standing there. An old man who tells this Saiyan, the king wants to see you, Yamushi. So this is our first look at Yamushi, the first Saiyan god. He has been summoned by the Saiyan king. And by what we know of in the storyline in Dragon Ball Super, Yamushi defied the king and defined all of the Saiyan race. So this is building up to that. Yamushi agrees to the request of the king and heads home. He doesn't know why the king has summoned him. It's not like he sits down with him every other day and chats. As he goes down, he enters his home. He greets his wife, Faisalis. So Yamushi had a family back then. A family of his own. He wasn't alone. He had something to rely on. Something to protect. He tells her that the king wants to see him, but he doesn't know why he has been summoned. The last time that he called him was three years ago to make him leader of his team. She tells him maybe he will make you king as she laughs. And I'm wondering about this. If he's become a team leader, why would the king summon him? What is there to talk about, especially with Yamushi? As he goes to sleep, he starts dreaming. A voice is telling him, Yamushi, you are weak, very weak. You failed to protect them. You aren't a true leader. You are just a weak Saiyan. He's trying not to listen to the voices in his head. He's trying to cancel those voices, but with no use. He rages and screams as he wakes up he also wakes up his wife she says that nightmare again it's the third time this week maybe the king summoned him because of the thing that he's dreaming about that nightmare him not having the power to protect his team about the one thing that is eating yamushi alive in the distance from yamushi's house we can see the old man the same old man that summoned him that told him that the king wanted to talk with him but why is he watching him what is there and what did yamushi do in the morning we go to the Saiyans West village. We get a bit of insight of how the Saiyans lived on planet Sadala. They weren't just a powerful warrior race. They were also traders. After the hunt, one part goes to the village to eat and non-consumable parts are used to create clothing as well. Clothing and jewelry that will be resold in other villages or on other surrounding planets. So that's how the Saiyans lived back then on hunting and trading. They weren't conquering planets, they were working to live. As Yamashi part ways with his wife, someone in the market calls for him. So we are summoned by the king. 
the room circulates fast and your friend Capra is also summoned. So Yamushi wasn't the only one that the king summoned and his friend was summoned also. But why those two? Why the king summoned just those? He asked the girl named Nasu, can you give me? Apple, and she sells it to him as he holds it a voice in his head is telling him it's strange i have a bad feeling about this apple he recognizes that smell and it's not a good sign as he crushes it in his hands he says i paid for it i do what i want with it but as she screams more she says die like your precious friend that idiot of and she doesn't even finish his name she's talking about the nightmare about the nightmare that yamushi had of him not protecting his team and his friends we see that he started to rage as he says don't say his name he powers up the anger is seen in his eyes and behind him we see the ozor form he transformed somehow but he's different his power is ominous he's not the same like before she asks him are you a hunt leader he says yes now you're gonna get rid of all those apples they're dangerous. From his looks, he's different than all of the Saiyans. When he powers up, it's like he powered up to a Super Saiyan, but not quite. His eyes changed and his hair grew long. But what is a hunt leader and why his power is different than all of them? As he powers down, he tells her, be careful what you sell. Goodbye, Nasu. As he continues walking, he reaches the Saiyan King castle. There he meets his friend Kabra. Kabra tells him that an old man came to him last night to tell him that the king wanted to see them. Yamushi met the same guy. Kabra says that it may be about their last mission, which Yamushi confesses that it wasn't that pretty what happened there. Now we see the last mission that happened one week ago. Kabra and Yamushi are battling some kind of a monster. The monster that they're fighting, they can't beat him in their best form. As one of the Saiyan females call for them and says, get ready for the transformation. Yamushi says, after the transformation, you will follow my instruction. As they get ready to end the monster's life, they launch the fake moon to the sky so they can turn to their great ape form. They use this transformation to hunt when their enemies are really hard to defeat. So this this is the big difference between them and the Saiyans that lived on planet Vegeta. They use their Uzor form to conquer planets, to take lives, but those are different. They take out monsters for their own sake. They don't conquer planets. Some Saiyans can't control their Uzor form, so they have a plan for that. Now we know what a team leader is. Some Saiyans manage to use the power of their Uzor form without transforming. Their eyes become yellow and their strength is then tenfold we call them the hunt leaders because they lead their comrades so what yamushi can transform to is his uzor form in his base form it's like super saiyan 4 in a sense that's why he's strong and very few saiyans can harness this power because it requires a great control of himself which means that the ones that control them are indeed worldly him having the power to control it himself shows the first signs of him being different than everyone else of him wanting to protect his race and not standing for how they changed and how will they become with a cry of war the leaders can then lead their allies during missions we see that he draws the ozoro saiyans towards the monster that they need to take out that's exactly what he does that's how they beat this monster 10 minutes after that as they get their clothes back his wife tells him that there's a strange smell in the air and the same goes for the other saiyans they say that they should get out of here fast yamushi tells them to go home he will take it from here he will go and see what is this strange feeling as he flies away he says i've already smelled that it cannot be possible but then he feels it more as he arrives he sees something and says what i saw that day i couldn't forget he sees bodies of other sands, bodies torn apart by someone. As he looks down on them, he can't believe what he's seeing. It's not normal to see Saiyans like that. It's not something that he's used to. It's just like a nightmare. As he looks behind him, he sees someone in a lake. As he turns around, we see 
who that is who he is exactly we don't know but it shows that Yamushi knows him he says it's you who is this guy and how does Yamushi know of him in the beginning of this chapter he said he couldn't protect them he meant those science but how will he protect them if he doesn't know them and how will he protect them if he wasn't there to begin with and he didn't know that they were there so this means that he knows this guy and he couldn't protect them because he couldn't stop this Saiyan as a voice is telling him Yamushi wake up it's Capra they arrive at the door of the king as they enter they go up the stairs from the shadows it's the king long time no see Yamushi the king is a powerful Saiyan who was elected by the people as their leader he also controls the power the Ozoro, which is just like Yamushi. The difference is he's staying in this state for reasons that no one knows. As the king says, I'm not going to go all out of my way. I want us to talk about what you saw last week and more exactly about the one who did it. Lately they have observed strange changes in their planet. People haven't been reacting in the same way for months as well as many animals and plants that die in an unknown ways as if they were infected by an invincible virus and many more people are aggressive in the village and all those elements seem to be related to one guy you know well Yamushi all the changes that we have seen have happened since the disappearance of a certain Saiyan a member of our team who disappeared during a mission and has never been found as we see that Saiyan in front of the old man as the king says the Saiyan had a serious disease Capra says yes the cells were abnormal and he was having a serious madness crisis so I didn't dream that day yes this Saiyan is none other than your friend Kanpa when Yamashu hears that name, his friend is the one that is destroying the Saiyan planet bit after bit. From what we know of this story in the canon timeline, maybe he's the first Saiyan that knows about the real truth of his race. That's why he's doing what he's doing. And in the future, Yamushi will join him to lead a rebellion against the king and the entire Saiyan race. I'm saying this also because the king is in his Uzor form all the time. Why is he in that form? Something is weird with him. It's different. It's not like everybody else and here where we get to the end of this story the story of the strongest saiyan there was yamushi the story of the first saiyan god the story of the first saiyan who saw what his race stood for and wanted to change him the first saiyan that goku became like this was the story of goku's reincarnation of the strongest saiyan of how yamushi was and how he inspired what goku has become Thank you for watching, leave your thoughts in the comments, and saying that, I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.